boy, it is hot in the UK. But anyway, welcome to a new video. Today we're talking about a new keyboard that I've been sent out. And I'm excited for this one because it's my first ever wooden keyboard. Now, these used to be quite popular back in the day, but then they started to fizzle out when aluminium or aluminium cases used to you know take over the scene and stuff so now they're coming back with this brand new one here from Akko and this is the MU01 it'll be in the description there'll be a link down there if you want to go check it out today I'm going to go over build quality what you get in the box and some pros and cons that I've found personally using this keyboard for over about a week or so we also have a lot more keyboards come in as well we've got one from drunk deer we've got one from Mel geek and also this one sent out by Akko as well which is the Mons geek M1 V3, but that'll be for another video because today we're talking about this absolute beauty. Let's run over some specs. The keycap features the complete poem Autumn Twilight in Mountain Abode alongside stunning Chinese landscape paintings. Crafted from exquisite walnut wood using CNC precision gives this keyboard elegance and durability. The keycap's made of PBT and the legends are made through a die sub process, which is one of the most durable inscription methods to prevent wear or discolor with use. And the board that I have here is equipped with the Akko V3 Piano Pro Switch. This is a type of linear switch with an operating force of 45, an end force of 50, a total travel of 3.1 millimeters and a pre-travel of 1.9. And with this board, it's equipped with premium hot swappable sockets, allowing users to swap to their desirable switches afterwards. This board also comes with purple plated mounted stabilizers and is also compatible with screwing stabilizers. This board has three different connection types, which is the USB, 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Now with it being Bluetooth, it's equipped with a 4,000 milliamp high capacity battery where users can engage with long periods of typing, gaming or productivity without frequently having to recharge. In the back with the south facing RGB, you can customize your lighting effects easily with the Echo Cloud driver, offering over 16 million unique colors per key, adjusting your brightness and also animation speed. The MU01 is also Akko's gasket mounted keyboard, where it's a type of mechanical keyboard that uses gasket materials such as silicon or neoprene to create a floating mount for the switches. The gasket is placed between the plate and the PCB, which allows more of a flexible and cushioned typing experience. Now the base itself is made of full oak. It does have to be treated with the wax that is included in the unboxing here. So this will need to be treated every so often, just so you keep the grain and the softness and the wood well maintained. Contained. There is a built-in battery again, so when you want to check your battery level, you just press FN and spacebar, you get these beautiful nice little green LEDs, and that basically gives you an indication if you're 10% to 30% or 90 plus percent on your battery. Now let's go over some pros and cons that I've found while using this. There's not many cons on this, there's only a couple, but for pros, it is such an elegant board. It's so lightweight, but yet it has got a amazing build quality. Being that wood, it's very durable, it's very tough smooth to the touch, S looks good, smells good, just everything you want in a gaming slash office keyboard. And if you're like me and you're really into this old rustic sort of office look, well I used to be RGB, I grew up, it looks tacky to me now, I'm into this wooden rustic vibe, the cabin style, and this fits beautifully inside there. With that gold strip as well, just looks so crisp. Another thing, it sounds fantastic. A very creamy sound. Obviously being linear switches, it's not too clicky, it's not too tactile, but it does still have that nice, that nice creamy, I wouldn't really say thocky, it's more creamy, if it makes sense. It's a buttery smooth sound. That's another pro, I love the sound of this board. Other pros that I found, the RGB looks good, there's different functions, different modes and things like that absolutely fantastic works a treat pros are the fact that underneath the caps lock is where you get your switch to turn it from different modes and for me i'd rather that on the back because if i want to you know turn it off every night i'd have to pull the caps lock off switch the switch into the middle to set it to off and then in the morning do the same blah blah it's just a bit more of a hassle than it's worth being under the caps lock is just a weird place to put a switch. Obviously, the more that you're gonna keep pulling this on and off, the more you're gonna deteriorate and bend or whatever and warp the caps lock button compared to every other button on your keyboard. Now, the keycaps themselves are very flat. That's not a cherry profile where it does like the curve, but it is a learning curve. Obviously, if you're used to having that curvature in your keycaps, this does feel very flat to the surface. So sometimes you will misclick. Another con that I found is battery life's not that great. It probably does last all day. It's just, I notice I do have to charge it a lot more than others that I've had in the past that are battery charged, uh, battery powered or wireless, if you will. I tend to charge every two, three days anyway. But yeah, it's just a bit of a downfall that, cause when you don't use this, it turns itself off and then it will reboot up. So I guess that's using a bit of energy to sort of 
reconnect, redo all of that. That comes on to the last con, which is connectivity when it switches itself off. Now it's obviously got this pro, it's obviously got this mode that, you know, battery saver, whatever. When you don't use it for a certain amount of time, I think it's only like a minute, even that, uh, it will turn itself off. And then when you click a button, it will reboot itself and then it will connect. If you, you know, leave your keyboard on the side for a little while, come back to type in and you go to type a couple of letters, it's actually gonna miss the first two letters by the time it's connected to the PC and then you're gonna have to go back or if you're playing a game, you've quickly popped out to get a drink, you come back and you're meant to be, you know, quickly pressing W to rush, you've gotta press it a couple of times and wait for it to connect. That's the only thing, it's very latency delayed when connecting. Once it's connected, there's not a single latency, it's very smooth to the touch, as soon as you press the button, it does the job but that's the only thing that I found is just that initial connecting to the PC. But for me, I definitely recommend this if anyone's in the market for a wooden keyboard or even just that collector's item to hang on the wall because this thing looks so aesthetically pleasing just to have out. Um, and that's why this is definitely in my top three. I'd probably say this is actually number one on my keyboard list just for the pleasing look and you know, it being real wood, not that cheap varnish stuff that people are just vinyl in and selling off as wood. This is actual solid oak and it just, it goes so well in the setup. So I'll leave everything in the description below. If I've missed anything on this keyboard and you wanna know about it, let me know in the comments down below so I can then come and answer some of your questions or just let me know your thoughts on the keyboard if it's something that you'd have in the office as well. But again, I'll leave everything in the description so you can go check it out for yourself. And if there's a cheeky discount code, I'll leave that there as well. But before I go, at the end of this video, there will be a sound test, so stick around for that. But anyway, capture, create, captivate, and I'll see you all in the next video.